What's up guys, Shane here Figure Day 3D Printing. I'm excited because today I'm gonna look at the Crowdy CR10. Welcome back guys. So the Crowdy CR10 has been on my wish list forever. And it's really because of the hype. A lot of people say it's better than the Folgertech FT5. My FT5 is my workhorse. It has been working since day one. I've done tons of work on it to make small changes and make it work the way that I want it to work. And I still have work to do on it, but everyone says that this is a better, cheaper option. I think it retails around $400 to $500, depending on like what random sale you get and which website you buy it on. So this one was sent to me by Banggood and they said, hey, check this out. There's actually a newer version coming out that they wanted to send me first, but I wanted to try this one. I was like, hey, let me see the original model. Try that out. I'll see how it works. And then they're gonna send me the whatever upgraded model or the newer model that they have now that uh, is, I think it's bigger. I don't know all the details to it, but we'll see when it gets here. But either way, let's dive into this. Oh man, it's big. It's a little bit heavy. I do find funny that they put the value at $168 for like a $400 printer. I guess maybe that's how much it actually cost. I don't know. All right, so we're in here. We've got a pretty thick piece of foam to cap it off. And I've seen, I've seen a few other videos, so I will caveat with this. I've actually refrained from watching most of the review videos on this because I don't want someone else's bias or what they think to kind of tell me what I know about this. I watched a few, kind of just the unboxings, but not like, like their gripe about it. And I did notice that it came like two pieces, which I thought was pretty cool. And there's a ton more foam. Here we have the bottom of the printer. And it's got the build plate and it's got a big piece of glass on it with rounded edges. That's pretty nice, I'm not even in frame, look at that. So there's the bottom. All right, and then another humongous piece of foam. A great big accessory box, which is pretty good size. The control box. All right, so here's the control box. And I, I did kind of like the plugs they had on here. I did see that, they're kind of almost, almost like cannon plugs, if you deal with military plug styles. Uh, and then here's a whole bunch of other cables and they all seem to be labeled. That's awesome. Which most don't ever come with that or if you build everything. I mean, all of my printers, uh, except for the Select Mini and the Q3 have been kits. So I'm kind of used to putting it all together myself. We've got a nice roll of tape. This is actually like a pretty large roll, I'm surprised. All right, and then we have the Z it looks like here. All right, there's that. So we're actually gonna go like this. And we're just gonna set this down out of the way for the moment because I'm running out of space on my desk. And that concludes, and I'll show here, it's really nice. They have this all cut out and it fits in there really nice. When you mass produce printers, Companies can do this. Uh, I know a lot of smaller companies can't do this. Like I know the Full Safety 5 just came like a box about this size, thrown in with a lot of paper and all the parts are in there. And yeah, some things were taped together, but for the most of the part, it was just kind of thrown in there. Uh, when you have a smaller production, large production, this looks, I mean, really nice. Can't, can't cross them off on their packaging. That was really good. So let's bring the Z back up here. We can take a look at this. It's a, Single Z lead screw. And this coupler here is like really spread apart. It's really different than the normal couplers I've seen. It's also way bigger than a normal coupler that I've used on other printers. It has a, looks like a plastic molded or injected extruder arm there. It's using steel or aluminum plates for connecting all of these together. Uh, this is an acrylic piece here, it looks like. Uh, this is all metal or aluminum of some kind. Slide's really nice. That's pretty good. We'll have to see how the Z is. It's a Bowden tube printer, so we'll end up having to connect this. And then here is that almost cannon plug style connector for the extruder. 
And these are really nice. They're keyed, one way to go in. I would hope that it's always wired correctly because if it wasn't, redoing this would be an absolute beast. That's the one thing I think about is that wires go bad, motors go bad. So replacing this with a third party might not actually be possible. I'd have to see, but it's just kind of my initial impressions here. This is plastic up here and it looks like there is a 608 ZZ bearing in there, but it does move a little bit to give it so it's floating, which it really should do. Uh, if they're anchored, uh, you could have some problems with Z banding. That's not gonna stay. All right, let's get the rest of this plastic off here on the actual bottom part of the printer. To dress it up, you see the orange here. This is just 2020 profile like inserts. Again, it kind of dresses it up a little bit, makes it look a little bit better. Here's the cannon plug for the heated bed and thermistor. And that's, like I said, there's a hefty piece of glass on here, which is really nice to see. And it has a single piece of tape on here, I guess presumably to do a test print. Comes with the standard binder clips that you would get in most kit printers. Um, I have yet to have a kit printer that didn't come with binder clips or expected you to use them. So there's two pieces of this like giant strip of tape and they cover the bill plate. Well, I guess you're supposed to use that initially to begin with. One side, the other side. I can see the bed plate's a little bit bowed but the glass should counteract that. We'll find out. This also moves very nice and smoothly, which is good to see. So underneath here, it's a, a very different, it's a Crowdy 3D. It's their own heated bed, we can see here. And right here is where the connections attach to the bed. Uh, they have nice thumb screws, not huge, but a lot better than those little tiny M3 ones that come with most kits, or if you buy like a 3D print bed uh, screw set with springs, the tiny M3 thumb screw drives me crazy. It's got rubber feet, which are connected via, looks like little aluminum plates on the 2040 and 2020 aluminum extrusion. The bed does have some wobble to it. I'm noticing that already, like that. Uh, hopefully that, uh, is correctable or something might be loose, I'm not sure. But that is, that's usually not a good sign. Oh, we've got the control board here, or controller panel. It's got Chinese and then it has English on it, so it's good to have both. Outer connector, inner connector, fixed joint, position of the chassis, so it's just kind of telling you installation tips are down here, a fused, on off switch which is good a little looks like 20 millimeter fan 30 millimeter fan on there this is a US unit so it has a 100 to 120 volt power supply and there's another 40 millimeter fan down here probably just for the power supply part this is probably just for the board to provide airflow uh, it says our Creality 3D our trustworthy 3D printer QR code for probably their website their Gearbest or Banggood or whatever company they decide to put it through uh, it's got good warnings on there. Those are always good to see. No voltage warnings though. I guess it's not really mattered. And this is a like a thin aluminum. Oh, it is. It can be selected. So currently it's on 220 and 110. I think I'm gonna put this on 110 for today. Oh, I see it down there. Now it does say 200 to 265 volts. That's a pretty big range. So if you're between 120 and 200, it ain't gonna work. And a box of accessories. We need a knife again. Okay, so first off, we have a packing list. Under sale service card. So there's our packing list first. And then here we have the insulation where it tells you all the different parts. This is the prep guide. And then we need a couple insulation parts to mount the Z to the base carriage which I guess would technically be our X in front of us, or Y, either one. Different printers call different things. My G-Tech is backwards, so. And then some quick guides here on what to do. So it's very, very simple. It's got a total of eight steps on the back here on 
connecting it together, making sure it all looks okay. Crappy picture, not gonna lie, it's pretty small. Oh, the after service card. Hacks out of the way. A guarantee card. A USB to mini USB. Interesting. I guess that's on the side. Yep. Oh, and it also uses a micro SD. I didn't even see those. There's SD and a micro SD card there. That's the one thing that's also annoying. I prefer regular SD cards. They're bigger and they're easier to keep track of. We have two different powers. So we've got the, I guess, European 220 and a regular 110 US style. I can use either one. I'll probably use the 110 for today's testing. Oh, we have some filament here. Looks like just a little roll of white, PLA 1.75. A really mini roll, I mean, compared to my hand, it's pretty small. But it's nice to have filament. I mean, it's a roll. Doesn't say how much it is, though. I would probably guess it's 500 grams, maybe 200, a little bigger. Uh, we have a nozzle cleaning. This is really hard to see, but a little nozzle cleaning thing. And I luckily put it inside a piece of styrofoam because it is a needle and it's very sharp. So watch out for your kids. I'm gonna put that there so I don't lose it. And we've got spare parts. So it has a spare nozzle, a spare boat and tube connector, uh, one great big M5, probably about 20, 25 millimeters. And then there's a few M4s, uh, cap nuts, some flat, a pan head. It looks like a M4 and an M5 T-nut, two M5 washers, lock washers. Oh, tools, very nice. Let's look at these tools. We've got zip ties, not really tool supplies, but we've got some flush cutters, which is a pleasant surprise. Everyone can use more flush cutters. We're gonna need that. And then there's a small screwdriver, a set of Allen wrenches, and two wrenches, which are probably for like the nozzle, I would assume, but we definitely are gonna need these. Uh, we have this which looks like it goes with this, which I believe is the spool holder. That's a pretty educated guess, probably what it is. And I believe, yes, this mounts to the top of the control box. Has a spare Bowden tube in there, a 0.3 millimeter nozzle. The bag says it is, but the nozzle is not marked. Oh, very nice, a micro USB to USB 2.0 cable and it has a is there an SD card in here look at that an 8 gig SanDisk Edge micro SD again can't argue with a free SD card I mean not free you bought the printer but it comes with one where I actually have not received a printer yet that came with any kind of media we're definitely gonna need that a very sharp paint scraper please be careful with these this one has a sharpened edge on it and yes I honestly feel this is a super dangerous thing I have cut myself with a dull one before, so this will screw up your hand. Please be careful. These are what actually should have a warning on it, not like electricity is bad too, but this is really bad. Be careful, guys. And here we have the installation parts, and that's it for the box. All right, let's see what's in here now. Filament holder screw, it says, but there's more than just for the filament holder. I would assume that these or for that, but let's get out a quick start guide and find out. As quickly we can add the spool holder on, which goes on like so with two of these little thumb screws. Pretty nifty and easy. I've never had a printer this easy. I mean, seemingly a kit easy enough to put together. So, so far, color me impressed for that because I feel that all my other kits have been a saga to put together. And this looks like it just kind of screws on here like so. And I'll tell you, but I mean, if I was a betting man, I would say this is the way it went on. And there's that. That's simple enough. The M5s are already connected to the aluminum piece, and there is a acrylic piece here that connects the Z-axis end stop. The other aluminum piece also has all of the M5s in it. There are four more here with lock washers, which need to be put on. They do all the hard work for you. I'm pretty doggone interesting, I'm not gonna lie. I'm kinda liking how easy this is looking to do, to be. Doesn't really say which way this is supposed to go, but the motor, I assume, would go. There's two gaps on this. So this gap here is larger than the gap up here. 
So I'm gonna assume the motor goes on that side because that's also where the cable is. Makes sense in my mind, I guess. This would be the front of the printer, motor's in the back of the printer. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. So let's pick this up. Probably should unwrap that first. And these are all pre-drilled, so don't have to worry about that. Just need to get it into the bottom of the 2040. So it is good that the, the frame is 2040. Uh, that makes a much more uh, firm frame, much more rigid than 2020 frame. Uh, I do have a Folger Tech 2020 that I've recently acquired and that is rigid, but this is also going the opposite way. So your torque, it all depends on how it's gonna be because this way, I haven't bolted it down yet. It's not tight, so don't jump on me. Uh, this way, you have much less stability than your side to side. This is front to back technically because I have printed this way. Your side to side is much more stable because there's more surface area tying it down. Again, an interesting choice. I don't know how it's gonna go for good or for bad, but an interesting choice. Black and orange is an interesting color combination as well. It's not on the back, just on the front and all of the top facing parts. You could pull it out and get a darker look to it. I don't really mind it. It does keep it cleaner though, because filament would get stuck down in there and we all know how dirty our 3D printers are. If you are an avid 3D printer, I mean, if you look at the bottom, some of my printers, they're pretty gross with all the little zits and snips that come off and the strings that happen to come whenever you clean a nozzle out. They're all just kind of sitting in there. Need to torque that down. One side done. It's not terribly heavy, which is nice once it's out of the box. So it's interesting how small the Z motor is. It's not a standard NEMA 17. It's not quite a short body, something in between. I'm not a motor expert, but I might try and Google this and see what size motor it is. The extruder, or I should say the, the X looks like it is standard size, and so does the, the Y, but the Z is something totally different. Aside from connecting the cables here, that was pretty doggone quick. That would be my battery dying. New battery now. As I was saying, you can see here on the back, that's where the plugs go. We've got the four pin to the four pin, and it's keyed, so it can only fit in one way. Seat that all the way, tighten that down. Then we have for the extruder. The connectors are, I don't want to call them cheap. A little bit feeling. There's the control box, and then we have all the cables here, which I'm tied up in my other microphone, right here. And they're all labeled, so let's just start with the smaller one. Other, I'm not showing you how to plug these in because I take it if you're watching this, you know how to plug a cable in. All right, the Bowden tube gets fed into here, and that is the extent of the directions. For testing, I'm going to want to print big. Of course I am. But let's at least, before we put on this tape, let's fire the sucker up. And... Power it on! Wow, that's loud. Those are fairly loud as well. Anyways, what do we got here? Uh, there is no like reset button, so I'm just gonna put my hand on the power switch in case it crashes. That's the right way. That's the right way. And that's the right way. Look at that. So we're about three to four millimeters off from where it should be. So I'm gonna do a quick calibration here. And well, I guess before we do that, let's just make sure it actually heats up. We're reporting temperature, so that's good. It's a uh, auto home preheat PLA. hot end is set for 185. Let's see how it goes. This is really loud. I'm waiting for it, the uh, hot end to level out and then do the heated bed. It's now sitting at 185. Usually I sit there like 10-15 seconds. 
and then it'll continue unless the heated bed is not even configured in the base of this. I don't know. And I'm guessing the heated bed on the default does not heat up because it still has yet to heat up. So we're just going to heat up ourselves because so right here, control, temperature, bed, 60. It's heating up. We're going to time this starting now. All right, so we're at 60 degrees. It took five minutes to heat up. So, I mean, I don't know if that's you know, anything better or worse. Uh, it said it started at 25 degrees to get to 60. Five minutes is what it is. So now, uh, I guess I'll just, they, you know, they give you the tape. I'm gonna use it. I prefer not to use like a tape. I'll put the tape down on it and let's see what this uh, sample G-code spits out. See how it goes. Well, I'm gonna put the tape on, level the bed, then I'll print it. So we'll come back to it in just a minute. All right, so the tape is on there. But when I was putting everything together, I told you I noticed that the build plate was really, really loose and it wiggled back and forth really badly. So I went underneath and found that four of the six wheels were actually loose. So I took the wrench and I took the Allen wrench and I was able to tighten all those up and it worked out great. I also noticed that the hot end carriage here was loose before, it is no longer loose now. I checked the Z, it did not seem loose to me anywhere at all but these were through lock washers and I guess through shipping channels or the machine just didn't quite get it tight enough. So I was able to correct all of that so far. Now I'm going to heat it up. I'm gonna verify that my build plate is level with the, with the uh, hot end. And then we're gonna do a print. So let's get to it. Bless you, buddy. All right, well it's a day later and I've done some test prints and let's take a look at how they turned out. The first one I did was this nut and bolt that was one of the first models on the main screen. And as you can see, there is a pretty serious layer shift that happened, oh, after about, I'd say, 10 or 15 layers. And then it continued printing perfectly. But, I mean, with that, it, you know, that's really not good. Uh, it screws together tightly, but it does screw together rather nicely. Obviously, you can't go all the way through because of this crazy layer shift. I printed it on a raft, and the raft comes off super easily, which is really nice. But again, if the layer shifts, you have a horrible print. So that one didn't turn out well. I printed the cat twice, and both times there was a one real bad layer shift, or under extrusion, I would say, and then it printed fine, then a layer shift, and then it went back to where it should be. That one failed. This one failed in the exact same place. So for both of those models, I'm gonna say they're just bad G-code. That happens a lot of the time. The sample G code they put on these things is horrible. I don't even know what they slice it with. We'll chalk it up to just being bad G code. I gave it a try, it didn't work. So I went into Simplify 3D, I downloaded the Creality CR10 default profile, and these prints worked, but they're really, really bad in my opinion. I shouldn't say really bad, but they are fairly bad. Now the issues I've had on these is it's a little hard to tell uh, from the angle here, but I'll try to take a picture and show you guys here that the top layer didn't even fill in the entire way. On these little clips, now these are another little upgrade for the CR10. These are just to put in 2020 and it can hold the wires, just kind of keep them more organized on here. But the problem with these is that they don't even have any infill. They didn't even fill in at all. They're just empty and it did the perimeters and nothing else. So that's another issue with that. And I printed out, uh, I printed out two of these actually. So I printed out a default one. Actually, this was buried in the menu in here. This is just a little cable guide for the heated bed cable on the back. So I did read online that that was an area of concern because there's, it's soldered and then it's off the board, like the heated bed. It doesn't really offer any type of support for it. So you would print this out and it would give it more support so that it wouldn't bend. And the default one came out okay, but again, the infill of the top layers and actually the infill inside doesn't even touch the wall. I can see all the way down to the bottom of this and I can actually put my fingernail or a piece of metal or anything down in there, or screwdriver. I can put the screwdriver all the way down to the bottom of the print. So that's not good. So I went and found another one online. It turned out equally as bad. The walls are good. The infill looks good, 
but the top layers are just really bad and the infill doesn't even touch the perimeter walls. None of that's any good. And I tried a Benchy. And the Benchy looks really, really good. It looks nice from afar. It feels nice, the walls turned out nice. But again, if you look down at the top, there's something weird going on the left side here. The right side came out fine, you know, as thin as it should be, but the, the left, I don't, I don't know. It's not a layer shift, it's just weird. And these are all sliced using the default one on the Simplify, in Simplify 3D. I did not try Cure yet, but Simplify 3D works well for everything else for me. I can't see why it wouldn't work well for this. But again, it's not a tuned profile. I just as my general first look at this printer. And I'm so far I'm not impressed with the quality that I'm getting. I don't know if it's just because the default Simplify 3D profile sucks or if it's something with the printer. So we're gonna have to dive into this, do some calibrations, calculate the steps. Everything looks to be the proper size though, but I'll calculate the steps out. I will go ahead and do uh, calculate the E-steps for the extruder, make sure we're getting enough ex uh, filament extruded out and go from there. Hi right, guys, well there it is. That's my unboxing, the first look here at the Crowdy CR10. There is definitely some work here to do with it. I think it does have some promise. It's super sturdy, which I like that for how simple design and how quickly it was to put together without me up at the camera like five minutes tops. It's super simple. It's a very interesting printer. I'm glad I finally have one to look at and test with it. So you guys will hear back from me real soon on kind of what I've done to you know, upgrade it and get it printing properly, get the profile tuned a bit. Uh, if anybody has a profile for me to look at, please give me a holler. Uh, I would love to see other people's profiles, see how they turn out with mine. So that's gonna be it. So thank you for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, give it a like. If you wanna support me, hit that subscribe button down below. Every subscription really does help. I've gone a ton of you guys over the past few months. I thank you for your time and for watching. If you wanna support the channel, lots of ways to do it. Patreon down below. There's some affiliate links that you guys can use. You can also check out some other videos to the side. And with that, thanks for watching guys. And as always, happy printing.